Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. You can get raw comics. They specialize in lots of 10. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. PopCultureZone.com. Now on to the video. You really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. What's going on, guys? Brown Superman's Comics back with another edition of that Simple Man's Comics and Friends podcast. I have another great guest with me tonight. You guys might know him, especially if you're a huge indie comic book fan. He is a Ringo Award winning writer. He's written some great indie comics. We have him here tonight to talk about a comic he has releasing very, very soon. And I want to take the time to welcome Rylan Grant. How's it going, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm I'm happy to be on. I'm a I'm a huge fan of the show. Uh, excited to be on. I, you know, it feels like uh, you know, I I have uh, I've reached the summit. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is great because you know we've you and I we've had conversations before on other projects like mainframe Comic Con stuff, but we haven't had a chance to have you on the channel yet. So I'm super excited about this. Now, for my viewers that you know, we always got new viewers coming into the channel. Can you tell them a little bit about yourself, your background? You know, we said Ringo Award winning. You know let us know your accolades and books and titles that you've worked on because i'm aware of you and you've done some great work but i want my viewers to also know more about you yeah bring them up to speed so um so i have for about 15 years uh worked as a screenwriter in hollywood um and i've developed film and tv projects i mean mostly big poppy action movies with folks like jj abrams and ridley scott and justin lynn and f gary gray and uh luke Besson and john woo and um so yeah, like I guess five, six years ago, I swerved into the comic book lane. Um, comics were always my first love and it was kind of a long time coming. Uh, my first proper book was a book called Aberrant, um, which was, uh, you know, kind of, it's been described by some as sort of 24 with superheroes. Um, and uh, Aberrant was uh, nominated for a handful of Ringos. Uh, it was nominated for best uh, single issue. And then I was nominated for best writer uh, that year um, alongside like Jeff Lemire and Bendis and Brian K. Vaughn. And it was like, it was like me and four first ballot hall of famers. And so, you know, I, I went to Baltimore Comic Con for the Ringo Awards and they were like, who the fuck is this weirdo that is nominated with all these, these guys. So, so that was wild. Um, and then, as you said, uh, we ended up actually winning one of these things somehow, which was, uh, you know, a minor miracle. Uh, but we uh, we won the Ringo Award uh, for Best Villain that year. And so um, so that was cool. Uh, it was a character that I sort of really loved. And, you know, there was a lot of me in the character. And so it was nice to, to kind of see that. Um, I followed that that up with a uh, superhero noir called uh, called Banjax, which um, uh, made um, about a dozen critics uh, 10 best lists. Um, a few years ago, and then it was nominated for four Ringo Awards, including Best Series, and we were nominated for Best Series alongside like uh, Bitterroot and Something's Killing the Children, and so that was never heard of kinda, those. Yeah, yeah, just hack books like that. So you know, nobody, um, nobody noticed or anything. But um, but yeah, so you know, it, it was it was it was really cool to kind of be doing these indie books and then end up kind of thrown in uh, into um, you know company like that. So um, so so that that was a big deal. And then um, and then yeah, like God, you know. A, about, uh, I mean, it's what, what a year and a half ago now when like shit started to go crazy with, uh, with the pandemic. Um, I had two books that were set to be uh, uh, released by big publishers. You know, they were, let's say, you know, we go back to like March of last year or something like that. Um, uh, we were about to announce them. They were gonna be uh, released in the summer. Uh, Suicide Jockeys was actually one of them. Um, and then suddenly uh, COVID goes crazy comic shops start closing, it's pencils down everywhere. Um, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with Suicide Jockeys, it's with this big company, we're, we're, we're planning this announcement, we're planning this release, I am in contact daily with like three people at the company and then overnight, um, everybody gets fired at that company and overnight, like I don't have a working email address there. Um, and so, you know, so, so then begins this like kind of months long, like are they gonna release it or aren't they? Uh, the old regime doesn't really want to be a part of anything that that the old regime, the new regime doesn't want to be a part of anything the old regime had going on. So finally, I get the book back, but you know, publishers are are scheduled like a year and a half out, right? And so, 
I have, I have these books, I have other books, I have a lot of books in the pipe. And so, so what do I do with them? And that was when for years, people had been trying to get me onto Kickstarter. Uh, uh, guys like Charlie Stickney, who does White Ash, who is now the co-publisher of, of Scout Comics. He's a, um, he's a, a, he's a, a close friend, but he's also like the biggest Kickstarter cheerleader there is. And he had for about two years, try, try to get me on a Kickstarter. And so finally, when it was basically impossible to have a, a traditional publisher run with the book, he's like, dude, you have to try Kickstarter. Um, and so about uh, a year ago, it was actually June of last year, I finally made the Kickstarter jump, um, uh, pun intended, with a, uh, a book called The Jump, um, which is a sort of a paranoid thriller uh, set in the world of astral projection. Um, and, you know, that, that was kind of a big uh, Kickstarter hit. We actually just, uh, we ran the Kickstarter for issue two uh, a few months back. And so this one is kind of rocking and rolling. Um, and, uh, and then I don't have that one. I have that one here. Excuse me. Great radio. Um, and then I, I, I kind of got a second book going, uh, called the peacekeepers, which is a, um, a sort of Fargo West crime drama, you know, something kind of completely different, kind of my curveball to the world, um, my little passion project, but, um, but yeah, this was a, you know, this was a, a big hit on Kickstarter also. And so, um, and so I'm, you know, I'm sort of, uh, working both angles right now. I mean, it's, um, it's kind of what I discovered is that there is a an audience that buys their comics exclusively on on in comic shops and an audience that uh, buys their comics exclusively on Kickstarter and there is some crossover but there's um but there's not as much as you think uh, and so I think as a comic creator uh, these days if you're not serving both audiences you're doing yourself you're doing your books a disservice and so you know, uh, um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm sort of working both angles now. And so now, uh, finally with COVID kind of, uh, um, you know, arresting now and, uh, things sort of returning to halfway normal, um, I am back with, uh, with, you know, my next book, uh, hitting comic shops. It's, uh, it's called, uh, Suicide Jockeys. Um, it is a, uh, a, a tokusatsu joint. Um, and, uh, for the uninitiated, uh, tokusatsu is the Japanese sci-fi action genre, um, uh, uh, that includes, uh, you know, uh, shows, works like Ultraman, Power Rangers, uh, uh, Voltron, but it also includes uh, uh, Kaiju Fair, like Godzilla, you know, monster, uh, monster movies and the like. Um, and so, yeah, our, uh, our book, um, we like to characterize kind of in a nutshell as sort of Voltron meets Fast and the Furious. We're trying to do Kaiju for the uh, modern American uh, action movie audience. Um, and, um, you know, we put a really interesting uh, uh, team together, you know? Um, I mean, first and foremost, um, the, the creative team, artist Davi Leon Diaz and, um, and uh, uh, colorist Juan Joko Triono and uh, uh, my, my letterer HDE, um, they were, that, that's the team that did uh, Aberrant with me, the, the Ringo Award winning book, and then they also did, did the Peacekeepers. So this is a team that I've worked with for, you know, years now. Um, we put out a lot of books. Uh, we put out high quality books. And so, you know, you're, you're getting something of quality here. But, but more interesting is how this thing kind of came uh, to, to into being. Um, I sort of co-conceived this thing with a guy named Brad Warner, uh, who was a really interesting cat. And let me, um, I'm going to, uh, here, here, it's right here. Um, so so uh, one of the weirder lines in my bio is that I am an ordained Soto Zen Buddhist monk. Um, and you know, we could spend an hour talking about that. So I'll, I, we, we won't veer into that lane. It's a weird thing. I'm acknowledging that, but we'll kind of move on. But you know, uh, uh, Soto Zen is a, it, it is a, a Japanese sort of sect of Zen just means we, we just, you know, we meditate a lot. Um, and, um, and so because of, you know, I, I've practiced, you know, some form of Zen or other for about 20 plus years. And so, um, so because of that, I have all of these kind of weird connections back to Japan. Um, and because of that, I know this guy, Brad Warner, who, uh, is another ordained Soto Zen Buddhist monk. Um, but he's also kind of like a very prolific author in his own right. He's written, you know, about a dozen books. He sold hundreds of thousands of books. And most famously, he wrote this book called Hardcore Zen, which you can get in any bookstore and, and on, uh, you know, Amazon and the whole nine yards. And this is kind of like the, the, um, you know, the, the modern American Zen Bible, you know? Um, uh, so if you're not Bible, but like instruction manual, you know, um, and so if you're, you know, if you're interested in Zen or meditation at all, I highly recommend this book. And Brad is an interesting cat. He was like, a, he was a punk rocker, um, who kind of got fed up with, uh, with his life here. And, uh, and years ago, he kind of tossed everything aside and he moved to Japan. Um, 
and uh, he ended up studying Zen, of course. But um, but more importantly, um, he started working uh, at a company called Zubariah Productions, which was founded by the creator of Godzilla. Um, and they are they've made dozens of of tokusatsu television shows and movies, but most famously, they do all of the Ultraman stuff. Um, and so I, uh, you know, I. I characterize this as uh, tokusatsu for the modern American action movie audience as uh, Voltron meets Fast and the Furious. Well, you know, again, for, for, you know, 15 years, I've been writing, you know, action movies in Hollywood. I, my, one of my claims to fame in that department is I've written for the directors of six of the nine Fast and Furious movies at this point. Um, so, so modern American action movie audience, uh, uh, Fast and Furious, I have that you know, sec I, I have that squared away. Uh, Brad was a um, was an executive, a producer on Ultraman and a ton of other uh, uh, TV shows, tokusatsu TV shows in in, uh, in Japan for about a dozen years. And so uh, he has that covered, you know, while while I am making sure that the modern American action movie audience gets what, what they want, he is making sure that uh, diehard tokusatsu fans get an authentic experience. And um, and so, you know, it's been a ton of fun um, to, to kind of do this thing and uh, to kind of run with it. It's sort of unlike any other project that I've worked on, you know? Yeah, and, and, and um, you certainly said a mouthful there and mentioned about Aberrant. One of the things I also remember from that is it had some great homage variant covers that a lot of people are liking it, which great stories, great covers. And you mentioned, we're gonna get into suicide jockeys here in just a second. But yeah, yeah. you can definitely tell your background of everything you just talked about. You could see it come to, to life in the pages of just Suicide Jockeys and, of course, the other books that you mentioned. Some great series. Make sure you guys check those out. And do you have a website that they're available on, or do they? Where can they get copies of those? Uh, well, Aberrant and uh, Aberrant and Banjax are available in fine comic shops everywhere. You should go down to your comic shop and 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 buy the hell out of those. Order them the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm um uh you know you can also get them on on amazon or comiXology or or anything like that but go to your comic shop and get those uh the jump and peacekeepers um my my kickstarter books will eventually find their way into a, a comic shop once those kind of arcs are complete uh right now they're available via backer kit so if you go to the jump to uh the number two uh dot backer kit dot com uh you'll see everything there and um that is kind of a cool you know one-stop rylan grant shop right now um you know, uh, we haven't had cons for, for a long time. Uh, I also don't get to do a lot of cons because I have this day job writing TV and movies. I don't get to travel a lot. Uh, I have a four-year-old, I don't want to leave her. Um, and so I do the Southern California cons, but if, if you're not in Southern California, this might, this might be the only way to get a, you know, signed books for me and everything. So I've signed everything uh, in, that, in that backer kit shot. Um, I also have um, a lot of really rare, interesting stuff there. Um, all of these crazy variants that you're talking about. Um, uh, I, I am famous, if not infamous, for my variants. Let me see if I can grab a couple off the wall here. Uh, um, this is kind of funny. I just changed my setup, so I'm kind of And, and I'll be sure to put a link in the description of this video, as yeah. well as uh, put it up on the screen here so people are aware of where to go to get those. Yeah, yeah, you can see some of them, but um, so so we're known for our crazy variants, and and um, and you know uh, we'll, we'll have a crazy variant uh, uh, every um, every you know our you do a regular cover, you do a variant cover. Our variant cover is always a little bit crazy; it's always an homage. But we also do these kind of uber uh, limited uh, uh, variants for cons and stuff like that. When I go to San Diego, we always have a uber limited variant. Uh, but you know, I think the, the first one we ever did was our coming to America uh, Zamunda variant um, for Aberrant that um, that kind of you know got written up in IO9 and and caused a, a minor stir. Um, but we've done a lot of crazy uh, Aberrant variants. We uh, our, our the the last one we did was a a weekend at Bernie's variant that again like you know people love. But we've done like Karate Kid variants and Top Gun variants. We did a Top Gun playing. Wasn't there a Billy Ripkin one also? Oh yeah, the Billy Ripkin fuck fakes uh, card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah, that, that, that's up there. Um, uh, but but yeah, and, and that was the Billy Ripkin fuck face card was was funny because um, so the guy on that cover, and you know maybe you can find that cover and and, and pop it on the video, but uh, uh, the guy on that cover is Lance Cordry. He's the villain uh, for which we won best villain at the Ringo Awards. And so when they announced my name and they announced me as the winner. Um, they had to put a picture of the villain up there. And the one they chose was that cover. It was, you know, and, and, and so 
So, I mean, this thing was, you know, they put it up on screen at the Ringo Awards. And, on not stage. to mention Ringo's in Baltimore and you got Billy Ripken, the Baltimore Royals. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why they did it. But it's like, but, but, but this thing is like 10 feet tall. And like, he's got fuck face written on the bottom of his bat. And then his, his position is unfettered asshole. And, um, and, 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 and everybody was like, ah! so, so, you know, so, so that was funny. So we get crazy with our variants. We have fun. Uh, Banjax had a couple of good ones. We had a gremlins variant. Uh, they're in, in Dory's tavern, uh, for San Diego comic con. And then we had a, um, a, uh, Rocky four variant for, uh, the Ringo awards, which people were, were crazy about. So long winded way of saying, you talk about my shop, uh, online, the backer kit, sh- kit shop, like, you know, some of these, some of these, uh, uh variants, they were only available for two days at San Diego Comic-Con. Only 50 of them exist. I have like a small cache of these left and they're up for sale, uh, you know, in the backer kit shop. You can get them signed and everything like that. So if you are short, any weird, rare Ryland Grant stuff, it's all available in the backer kit shop. And, and uh, it, it, yeah. And not only that, not, you know, you're supporting a great comic, but then you also have the nostalgia. And I mean, I'm always big on nostalgia. It fuels my collection, but just the stuff you were showing there from an 80s kid between Rocky Four, between Gremlins, between the 89 Fleer, Billy Ripken. I mean, those are stuff that you get a great comic and you get a great variant from a great creator. So, uh, well, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, if you're for the collectors out there, I mean, if you're looking for, for rare stuff again, like, you know, I, I think there, I think there are 50 of these in existence, you know, so like it doesn't get any rarer than, uh, than, than these things. So, um, so yeah, they're up there and, and, you know, they'll, they'll be gone soon. So, uh, so, you know, yeah, if you want to, if you want a Rocky four variant, uh, you know, go get it. <laughs> dies, he dies. So let's <laughs> jump dies. in. Let's jump into suicide jockeys. You were yeah. gracious enough to give me an advanced PDF copy to read. Absolutely loved it. The way you described it from after reading it, I can definitely get the fast and furious vibe here, especially Voltron, Fast and Furious, you could say Power Rangers, Fast and Furious, because we have things that come together to form one to take down an enemy, right? Yeah, yeah. But going also with just the, what you were just showing with those aberrant, with the, the nostalgia factor, one thing I liked within there was you got a little callback to Roadhouse going on in, in, in that page. <laughs> yeah, the, well, it's, um, yeah, well, you got the, um, that's actually the variant cover for issue one. That's what um, I was hoping. Know, it, I wanted to make yeah. sure. Yeah, it, it's folded into the PDF for you there, but um, but yeah, we're um, I, you know I, as I said, we always let loose at our variants, so um, there will be a standard variant for each issue, um, and the the issue one variant is in fact a a Roadhouse variant. It is a, a direct homage to the 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 road the original Roadhouse poster, which is just awesome, you know. And so we took our we took Swayze out and we put our character in and and messed with the language a little yes. bit, but we had a lot of fun with it. And, and, yes, we and, got and, we and, got and, Dalton, but not Dalton. Not Dalton, yeah, yeah, and and you know it, it, it's it, it's funny, you know, it's funny because right now, um, one of the one of the film TV st- uh, things that I'm working on, and I can't talk too much about it, but um, I am with uh with Joel Silver's company exploring the possibility of turning Roadhouse into a TV series, um, and so Roadhouse is on my brain right now. I've watched Roadhouse backwards and forwards, you know, dozens of times over the last couple of of uh, of months, and so um so. You know, if there was anything that was just stuck here and needed to come out, it was that. And so, uh, so if anything, if the Roadhouse TV series never goes anywhere, at least we got this cover. Um, but, but it continues on. And so, um, issue two, we did a, a, a bullet variant, the the film Bullet, um, which you know we just found an amazing bullet poster that I fell in love with. Um, issue three is a Top Gun variant. Um, it's actually the second Top Gun variant that I've ever done. Uh, Aberrant has, uh, as I alluded to before, a Top Gun playing with the boys volleyball variant, which is is amazing and was 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 much uh, appreciated by fans. This is more of a standard, you know. Uh, Suicide Jockeys is about you know swinging dick men and women like climbing into you know armored tank and aircraft and fighting monsters, yeah. and so it, 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 it skews more in it's that almost direction. Almost got that aliens vibe, you know the. <laughs> The, the start where they're all getting their guns and stuff ready and and bill paxton and everyone they're yeah. all tough but there's not well i can't say there's not aliens in here but you do get that fast and furious like you just said that grab a beer kick some ass action yeah, yeah. vibe going on in this issue <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's funny i mean it's um yeah it, it does it does have that you know i mean it is it is the the most sincere like homage to all of these, you know, 80s, 90s action movies that we know and love. And, you know, and, and, and there is, um, 
there's a piece of all of it in there. I mean, my favorite films are are Beverly Hills Cop and Forty Eight Hours and Die Hard and Roadhouse and and um, and and you can feel all of that in there. Um, but then you know it even like it even peaks into the early '90s where the, there was this boom of amazing uh, action movies in, in the '90s. I guess it goes into the late '90s because you know I'm thinking like The Rock and Face Off and uh, all the and, Bruckheimer and, and, stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, and, and Armageddon and uh, and Con Air. You know, and 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 this is you know it's like I mean this is the stuff that I mean I, I just ate this with a spoon when I was coming up. You know, and so. Um, and so, the, you know, this is an homage to all of that stuff, but it has this it has this other layer to it also, where it is this like, it is this um, this this character drama, and it is this like examination of a non traditional family, almost like Boogie Nights, you know, um, and and that becomes more apparent as the series unfolds, as you get into the second issue and the third issue. The second issue really dives, you know, more into that as the team kind of has to this fractured team has to to kind of come together. Um, and, uh, and so, um, so yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I'm hitting a lot of notes here, um, but, but it is fun and, uh, and, and everything that you loved and consumed growing up, this is, uh, there are references to it. There's, you know, I mean, it, it, the A-Team band is in this issue, the, the, you know, Magnum's Ferrari is in the background, uh, of a shot, fucking Lou Ferrigno and Eric Estrada are, I was gonna are, say, you are, got Pips and, and Hulk in there. Yeah, are, 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 are mentioned, and so, um, and so it's just fun, and um, and you know the the compliments I've heard on the issue uh, uh, thus far are are those where it's like they feel like um, people feel like every time you read it you sort of pick something else up, you know, and you're kind of laughing the whole time and and uh, and and just having fun with it, and and you know and the thing has this kind of great pace, you know. I mean, I, I it, it's kind of like you're strapped to the the head of a missile at the beginning and just fucking shot into space, you know. And, right. And, yeah, and you either go or, or 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 you know you fall to the ground. So um, so I don't know. I I, I think that uh, you know those those are all those are all big compliments for me. And so uh, so I think it's gonna be fun. I, we're proud of it, and we had a ton of fun doing it. And um, and it's gonna be fun to see people kind of consume it and enjoy it. You know. Right, and I, I don't want to give too much away from the issue, but from reading it, it's got that movie vibe. And I know a lot of people say that about comics, but you can see your background in there where you got. Hey, it comes out with kind of an action scene, right? And then it kind of scales back to, hey, that was in the past. This is in the future. So you almost get like, hey, you got a group of badasses, but then the one badass is now kind of hit rock bottom and he's trying to scrape by and he's got a chance at redemption within the end of this issue is kind of how I see the story arc building. But what else I liked about it is, you know, you're a screenplay writer, but you're also, you can look in your room and you could see, like the rest of us, we're geeks, we're comic nerds, you like comics. Yeah. But what I liked about it is <laughs> you're, you're not scared to poke fun at, you know, you poke fun at yourself so you, or you poke fun at us. And I enjoyed reading that because you kind of yeah. play on, hey, look at these, these nerds at, at, a, at a convention and, and, and the tropes and the stereotypes of people that go to comic convention plays out just in this first issue. And I got a kick out of it. And it's like, hey, this is who we are good and bad take it right yeah i mean it's you know i mean comics writing comics they're very much therapy for me i mean i whatever i'm dealing with in my life you know i mean usually it's getting my demons in a room and kicking the shit out of them but really whatever i'm kind of dealing with trying to process in my life they end up in the comics one way or another and so i mean i have um this is very recent for me you know what i'm saying like like you know whatever level of fame like you know comic fame is but but you know i go to cons and people want to come to my table and meet me and get my autograph <laughs> and that that is a weird thing to process after um you know after I mean I was writing for 10 years in Hollywood and you you nobody really knows who the screenwriter is like if you're Shane Black maybe but other than that like you're you're you know you're you're in your your office at your house and uh and and you don't you know you don't have to deal with any of this stuff but it's just different and so yeah we poke fun and 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 we do it in an interesting way I mean it's um uh, I mean, I dealt with this in Aberrant and Banjax, this idea that if there were these kind of larger than life heroes in the world, if there were men in capes and women and with powers and and if there were um, if there was a you know a Captain America, if there were um, if there were you know if there was a Voltron like team that stood between us and giant monsters, these people would be like ludicrously famous. You know what I'm saying? Like there would be like the fandom would be outrageous. I mean, look at the Kardashians, like they've done nothing 
of substance really but they're they have like hundreds of millions of followers on, on on social media they are like wildly famous and so uh so i've explored I, i've explored something like that in every book i've done and so 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 we do this the idea that well yeah these guys were you know particularly 10 years ago they were they were they were at the top of their game they were like the biggest baddest you know uh you know fighters in the monster game and so everyone loved them uh and 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 then basically what happens in that first issue is there was this mission that goes horribly wrong, right? And so we then cut to ten years later, and the team is fractured. They're all in kind of separate corners of the, uh, you know, of the globe. And, and and as you alluded to, our our hero Denver, um, he's this washed out, drunken loser now, and he's the guy who used to be, and he he's isn't got anymore. Got a little bit of stone cold to him, also though. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's a, that's good. I never thought of it that way. Uh, uh, I, I, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm a, I'm a huge wrestling guy. So, so certainly he's got that swagger. Um, uh, but, but yeah, you know, and so now he's, you know, now he's stuck at these cons, like, you know, trying to, you know, trying to sell autographs and trying to sell pictures and trying to, you know, upsell people, get them to buy t-shirts and bobbleheads and stuff like that. And he's miserable. You know, um, and then when this this chance at redemption, as you called it, kind of shows up, you know, this 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 scientist figure sort of walks out of the shadows and says, hey, you know, that thing that went wrong 10 years ago, there is this opportunity to kind of write, you know, the write what once went wrong to like return to your glory. And, you know, it, it's this, uh, you know, he's stuck in this pit of despair and somebody's throwing a, a, a rope down there, you know, um, and uh, and and he's kind of eager to you know, start climbing. And so, um, but yeah, so, uh, so we, we do poke fun at the, you know, at, at the con scene and it's all from personal experience. And, and, and I'm glad you picked up on the fact that I was, I, I was, I'm poking fun at the fan uh, as much as I, I was, I, I'm poking fun at myself as much yeah. as I was poking fun at the fan. Um, it, and I'm also, I'm like, also I don't yeah. want to say self-deprecating, but it's, it's, a, it's refreshing to see where it's, yeah, both ways where. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, look at this, you know, I have also for, for decades been one of those fans also, you know, I've, I, it, I it's this unique perspective because I've been, I've been on the fan side of the table and I've been on the creator side of the table. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm bringing all that and I'm, I'm throwing heat, you know, so. And one other thing I liked about this first issue is I don't know how long you've been working on, on this issue and it's getting ready to come to print, but you're hitting also on two topics that seem to be super popular right now between media and comic books and one of those is like you mentioned the, the kaiju side of the story and also we got time travel in here and time travel is, is super hot right now but i mean we had avengers endgame we got loki going on right now we got more multiverse of madness there's other time travel books media stuff going on so those are two hot topics and they play well just into this first issue yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than a good time travel story, and I feel like there is a like there is a wave of time travel stories every couple of years. Um, I mean, I remember. It's funny to hear that it's getting hot again, and you're yeah, absolutely right. It's like always, you're, like you just said, it comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, and you're you're probably the third person that said that to me. It's like, oh well, well, time travel is getting hot again, um, because you know there was I, I don't know if it was four or five years ago, like time travel was the hottest thing in Hollywood. So like you're going to need travel. a time cop variant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, a Van that, Damme that, time that, cop variant. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's actually kind of amazing. I, I, I should look at that. Um, and um, uh, uh, yeah, so, um, but yeah, it's funny. So, so it was like, so yeah, four or five years ago, it was the hottest thing in Hollywood. The, the movie, you know, this, like time travel specs, time travel pitches were selling like crazy. And then you saw so many of them that Hollywood for a couple of years was like, no more time travel you know what i'm saying uh and then you lay off it for a bit and now the next wave is coming through and so um so yeah i mean i i, I try not to pay attention to it and just write what i want to write um and, like no uh, more time travel let's go back to disaster movies <laughs> just like yeah that. no I, I i i love a good uh I, I love a good disaster movie too like my you know one of my um one of my favorite like subgenres of of you know I I guess it's sci-fi is the like a meteor or or a comet is going to hit Earth and what the fuck do we do about it? Um, uh, you know I mean Armageddon is is one of my favorite films like both ironically and not ironically I think <laughs> I think oh, it's yeah. amazing I think it's incredible uh, I could I, I I could I could just watch that on loop and, and, and until I die but um, but if you do digging you know of, of course Deep Impact came out at the same time. 
Uh, there was a made for TV movie called Asteroid uh, right at the same time. And so there was a lot yeah. then. Same with the volcano um, movies. There was like two at the same time. And yeah, 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 yeah. The volcano movies were, yeah, what, what was it? It was, uh, there was, there was literally volcano. And then what was the other one? Um, it was, yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking <laughs> yeah, yeah, about, yeah. though. Yeah. But yeah, 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 but um, but uh, yeah, but but there there are tons of these things, you know, and particularly when like effects got easier, they they started doing them direct to video, and so there are a bunch of those. But what happened is that a few years ago, uh, an asteroid actually, you know, uh, we were watching one asteroid that we were worried about. It was a bigger asteroid, and then it became uh, this is like maybe three years ago, and then it became clear it wasn't going to hit us. And so we're watching this one and we're watching it go by. And as that's, that's happening, another asteroid that we never saw coming roars into our atmosphere uh, and explodes o over, a, o over a small town in Northern Russia. Um, and that, that, you know, and, and, and basically no, nobody died luckily, you know, it was a smaller thing, but it, it, it shattered glass everywhere. And it, 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 you know, like a thousand people got cuts and bruises basically. Um, but that shook the world up. And so, uh, since then, we've seen another round of these asteroid movies, um, uh, and and there was a really good one called Greenland um, that, like, unfortunately nobody saw because um, it was during the pandemic, kind of, right? Yeah, it kind of got lost during the pandemic. It was supposed to be a big event movie. Is that, uh, and then, the Gerard Butler was he in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gerard Butler and uh, the wife from uh, season one of Homeland, and um, and there were a bunch of kind of that guys and that gals that sort of pop yeah, up oh, I know it. that person <laughs> yeah but it's like I'm I, I'm such a you know I I'm like a mega fan of the genre like you know it's one of my like five favorite things to watch and um and that movie was awesome so if you haven't if you haven't seen Greenland go out and watch Greenland it's great I, I I'm almost I'm almost pissed off that it, that it came out because I wanted to write that but uh but I don't know I'll, I'll have to wait uh, a few years I guess until uh you know the next asteroid uh, crashes down somewhere and then I'll I'll ride that wave so <laughs> So definitely Suicide Jockeys issue one. When is it when is it being released? Yeah, so it hit previews uh, this month, meaning June, uh, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, uh, you can go down to your local comic shop right now and uh, and uh, you know subscribe, put it on your pull list. Uh, it'll go for four uh, for uh, four issues. This arc will um, start sitting comic shops in August. Yeah, and I'll put the diamond code right up on the screen right now. So if you want to write that down, take it to your LCS, or just like you like he said, just go there and tell them, hey, you want Suicide Jockeys? I'll tell you right now, first issue is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to read the second, the second, third, fourth one. And you said for now so do you have follow on arcs planned yeah you know we do it's it, it's um you know there's kind of like an art and a science uh, uh to doing these things um and um you know you you want to i think you want to lead with like a very you want to lead with a short sweet but complete arc you know give give everybody like a nice trade to kind of dig into and and that goes for i think readers and publishers you know publishers don't want to have to commit to Oh, this is a 20 issue arc and all that stuff. Um, uh, but in in creating this first four issue arc, what you want to do is create a world that will support 100 four issue arcs and create characters that that merit that and all that noise. So um, so I think we've done that here. So that yeah yeah the first issue arc um, it wraps up nicely, but then it sets up you know all sorts of uh, of crazy drama to come. And so hopefully it leaves you wanting more uh, and demanding more. And, you know, uh, we've seen this work, uh, really well, you know, one of my close friends in comics is David Buru, who does Canto. Um, and, you know, they like to put out these kind of badass, uh, uh, four issue arcs and, um, and, you know, they give people just enough to kind of rile them up and leave them demanding more. And then, you know, and then they wait a little while when the readers just can't stand it anymore. They give them another one and, uh, and, and they're doing pretty well. So, uh, I, so, I was just going to say, is like, yeah. you know, we, we've seen that becoming a, a more and more growing trend within comic books and comic book collectors say three to five years ago when you saw arcs like that or you know volume one oh four four issues they 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 scoffed at it but then as the storytelling got better it fits the narrative just as you said it fits it better where you can have that digest spark it fits a better trade and it kind of i want to say what's the appetite but you know you can digest it you can read it you can go back and read it again and right when you're like oh okay that was good the next ones are coming up behind it instead of that ongoing where one i love an ongoing series but it also puts constraints on the creators because you're always having deadlines to meet you know and, and if you something comes up and you're not able to keep that momentum up 
we all know things happen. It seems to kind of be a detriment to the series where if it's those planned arcs, as you say, it's like, hey, I know this is coming. Gives me time to read it, digest it. I can go do some other stuff here, read some other things, but I know this is coming back. And then when it does, I'm back on board for it. I, I like that. I think it gains the attention of the readers better, more so today because we all know <laughs> any new comic book day, you can see how many comics are coming out. So it's like, I like to find stuff that I like to read and stick to that for sure. Well, and it, you know, yeah, people like manageable uh, uh, fits right now. You know, I mean, it's a, I mean, they all have their ongoing series, right? But uh, you know, it's it's tough to, I mean, particularly with an indie book. You know, the idea of like you're 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 perusing a comic rack and you see issue 19 of something, it's like, well, you're not buying that, you know. And it's like, well, uh, do I have to go back and read 19 issues to 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 understand this? And uh, you know, that 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 is a lot. And if it's it, not like it's going to say great jumping on point on the cover here all the time. Yeah, and if you know if it's Batman, um, you know if it's Batman, that's uh, that's one thing, you know, because w we all know Batman. We know enough about Batman to like just hop in here or there and and understand it. But when it's a new series, an indie series, and 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 you're totally right. Like a few years ago, the game was completely different. But um, the way we consume media in general has changed so radically. Like the last, you know, even just the last year or two, but certainly the last five years. Um, where, you know, we are used to binging, we are used to short series, we are used to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mayor of Easttown, you know, it was, what, what was it, six episodes or something like that, you know, and it was this, it, you know, it was this beautifully told, like, really layered story, um, and, uh, and, you know, people like these, like, small binge-worthy things, you know, um, and, uh, and, you know, again, you could pick up, you can pick up arc two of Canto and you don't have to have read the first arc, you know, it, it's its own story and they tell it in a way where, where you, you know, everything you need to know moving forward. Um, and, uh, and you might read the second one first and be like, oh, wow, I gotta go, I gotta go get the first one now and read this because this is so rich and so awesome. And so, yeah, I mean, the game has changed so radically and, uh, and it's good for us. Cause you know, I mean, I, I have a day job, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm writing, I'm writing movies, I'm writing TV shows and this comic thing is kind of a, you know, it's my, it's, these are my passion projects, you know? So it's, um, it's nice to be able to kind of, uh, you know, do this stuff, um, you know, when I have time and get these arcs out to you guys and, um. And, um, you, you, you know, otherwise, uh, I mean, <laughs> got an ongoing series that, you know, that, that might be a little unmanageable, but, uh, Oh yeah. David, we a great guy. He's been on this channel a few times talking Canto with Drew Zucker, but yeah. I, I think I've asked this before. I know I've asked David Boer this, but would you see, and I know you guys are friends and if David Boer is watching, I will make sure that he watches this by the way, when can we get a Rylan Grant, David Boer anthology. You know, that you guys team up and do like some little anthology series. I think would be freaking awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, that would that would be incredible. Um, I think he's I think he's wildly talented, and I think he's a great guy, and I think we'd have a blast doing it. Um, uh, it's it's it, it's a very good idea. Um, and you know, I have I have toyed with the idea of dipping my toes into the anthology game um there is actually an anthology that i kind of desperately want to create and shepherd and uh and and bring my close friends on to uh to to write you know sections of and and stories on um it would be such a massive undertaking i don't, I don't know if i have it in me or not um but um if i were going to do that um and and i want to do that but uh if i were able to do that he would be one of my uh he would be one of my first calls absolutely definitely so yeah suicide jockeys got that coming out you guys make sure you go to your lcs let them know that you want to get this pre-ordered put it on your pool list or are you going to have any cons coming up you mentioned some con exclusives from your previous titles are there any going to be any special variants for this cover or in your shop or at a con or do you have any appearances coming up where people can uh uh well yeah i mean special variants is a great question because um you know so this is coming out via source point press um, you know, great, great company. I'm doing my first book with them and I'm, I'm, I'm no doubt going to do a, 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 a several books with them. I, I you know, uh, great people over there and great company and tastemakers and all that noise. But one of the really cool things they do is they do, they have a um, retailer exclusive variant program. And so, um, so, uh, you know, Aberrant is kind of not, not Aberrant, excuse me, <laughs> Suicide Jockeys is the, the featured book uh, uh, for, for, for this month. 
Um, and so there are 10 spots. And so 10 retailers will have their own uh, exclusive variant of this. And so there, there will actually be 12 covers. Um, and so, you know, we have, our, we have our, our normal cover, which is pretty badass. We have our standard variant, which is the Roadhouse variant. But then there are these 10 other ones that are being kind of produced now. And it's, it's, it's amazing to watch it happen. I mean, I, I'm obviously variant crazy. I have them up. I was just showing them off. Um, but, uh, but I've never done 12 variants for a single issue. Um, and so, uh, you know, um, you have these big shops coming in and some of them are bringing in these big heavy hitter artists that'll be announced down the line. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, some of them, they have their own idea. They have their own artists, the whole nine yards, but then there are other retailers who are coming in and saying, you know, Hey, Rylan, we want to, we want to co-create this with you. Um, and, uh, you know, and so we're building it from the ground up. So there are going to be a lot of wild variants for this issue one. And, um, and I should say too, I didn't mention, um, the, all of the standard variants on, um, on, on suicide jockeys, they're being done by, um, by the art team that did, uh, Banjax and the jump for me. Um, and they were all, uh, they were all nominated for Ringo awards for their work on that. So, um, uh, we have Fabio Elvez who was actually nominated for, uh, uh, best cover artist, uh, uh, at, at the Ringo awards for his work on Banjax. Um, and then he also did, uh, the jump covers and then, and then the colorist Edson Pereira who was nominated for best colorist. And so that's an incredible team doing our regular variants. And so those are going to be bonkers also. Um, so, so variants, 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 they're going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Con stuff is, it, it's interesting. Um, I, uh, I think it was a day or two ago, I started kind of looking at that seriously for the first time. And, um, and part of it was I received an invitation to guest at the Lexington Comic Con, which is a, which is a great con and I have family in, in, in Kentucky and it wouldn't be the worst thing to get out there and see them. But again, it's hard for me to travel with my, my day job and, and with my four-year-old. So I don't do that a lot. Um, so I might not have considered it, but then I looked on their website and, um, and, and saw some of the other guests and two of them, uh, they have um, Martin Cove and William Zabka, uh, Johnny Lawrence and, and, and Sensei Kreese from, uh, from Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai. And I'm, I'm like a Karate Kid fanatic, you know, like I'm, I'm the biggest Karate Kid fan in the world. And so um, the idea of being on a bill with those two uh, uh, gentlemen is, is kind of incredible. So uh, I have to give that serious consideration. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off, but that would be awesome. Um, other than that, uh, uh, as things kind of get back to normal, I will absolutely be doing the, uh, the SoCal cons. Um, Comic-Con is doing a weird thing where they have this, they're doing this event, this in-person event, but they're doing it on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Um, I was, was going to ask you about Baltimore. If you, if yeah. You well, I, I mean, I, I would love to do, uh, I would love to do Baltimore. Um, yeah, I guess like, um, you know, I guess it won't be, it probably won't be this year. I will be eligible for the Ringo Awards next year. Um, so hopefully I'm nominated and hopefully I'm there uh, uh, next year. Um, I don't know about this year. It's going to be, yeah. you know, it, it'll be a weird thing again. Uh, you know, that travel, like, again, if, if they nominate me for, for awards, then, then, you know, I sort of have to, to go out and I mean, Baltimore's a great con. It's uh Baltimore is actually like, um, I mean, shout out to them because that is, if you pull creators, that's their absolute favorite con. That's where like, um, you know, a lot, a lot of times you go to these cons and they're not there to meet creators or buy books. They're there to see the new Marvel trailer or whatever, yeah. um, you know, but you go to Baltimore and it is like a rabid fan base. Yeah, there. It's they're very too comic centric. Like, yeah. And it's, and, and that's really cool. So that, that's one of my absolute favorite cons, even though I don't get to go out there, but um, you know, the first one might actually be, um, I think that uh, I think LA comic con is doing an event in December um and that one looks slash feels pretty good to me right now so that might be my 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 triumphant return um you know uh i i'm i'm uh i don't think it's open until august but i'm gonna see if um i i do a lot of panels at cons i i organize panels i put them together bring creators in and stuff like that and so i would love to return to doing that at uh at la comic con if they'll have me so you know and then after that um, I do all the LA cons. I do all the Long Beach cons, which are are some of my favorites. Again, like very kind of comic book creator centric. Um, those are awesome. And then I do um, WonderCon and San Diego Comic Con and um, and LA Comic Con. And you know, every once in a while, I get into some other trouble. But uh, right, yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I loved talking to the viewers about Suicide Jockeys. I'm telling you, first issue is absolutely fantastic. 
make sure you guys pre-order that at your LCS online. Look out for those retailer exclusive rants Rylan was just talking about. But before I let you go, we talked about Comic Cons coming up, but what else do you have going on? And you also have the writer's block, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's funny. I, I, um, I, I always forget to pimp the, the writer's block when I'm, uh, when I'm on it. But yeah, um, I do a podcast called The Writer's Block um uh which is you can find on uh uh you know itunes and spotify and uh other purveyors of fine ear crack and it uh it uh, also runs on the comic core uh youtube uh channel um and i think the mainframe comic con youtube channel um so you, you can find it in a lot of places uh but yeah it is a um it is kind of a creator's powwow so um uh you know things like mainframe comic con which again you and i collaborated on that was where we met um uh, when there were no cons, that sort of satisfied, um, you know, the, the the need for for that sort of thing. Uh, there have been, you know, a couple of these like really successful, really interesting uh, 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 online cons. But what what we missed as creators was um, uh, something that is sort of uh, referred to as bar con, which is after a long day on the floor, creators get together, they go to the bar across the street from the, uh, uh, you know, from the the convention center have a couple of beers and just shoot the shit. Um, and so uh, my, my partner in crime, David Avaloni, who's a, a, you know, a pretty prolific comic creator himself, um, he writes um, Elvira for uh, Dynamite and did the Betty Page comic over there. And he uh, wrote uh, Drawing Blood with Kevin Eastman. Um, uh, he's one of my, my closest friends in comics. And we kind of got together and we decided that we were gonna, we were gonna do bark on ourselves like over, uh, you know, over Skype. And so um, every week, we get a couple of uh, uh, creator friends together and we just shoot the shit. Um, and it's it's really informal. Um, we start out with kind of a, uh, 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 a little food for thought, a little kind of comics industry uh, uh, question. And we start talking on that, but it sort of very quickly devolves into like us, you know, arguing over, you know, old Star Trek episodes and, uh, you know, calling each other motherfuckers and stuff like that. Um, and so, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's fun, it's crazy. And we've had um, some incredible guests on. I mean, we've had, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kevin Eastman, of course, but um, uh, Matt Fraction, Stan Sakai, um, uh, David F. Walker, um, uh, John Lehman, Cecil Castellucci, uh, um, on and on and on. It's a, it's, you know, it's a laundry list. And so, um, so yeah, you can, um, uh, you know, if you go to my, um, social media accounts, I'm, I'm at Rylan Grant on, uh, on all forms of social media. Uh, uh, you know, you, you'll find links to all those shows and everything. So, um, so, so check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, um, I mean, I was just, uh, it was just announced I was hired by um, Immortal Studios, which is uh, this this incredible uh, uh, publisher of uh, 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 wuxia uh, uh, action comics, um, and you know they they have a lot of movie and, and TV stuff going on. Uh, wuxia for the uninitiated, um, think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the kind of uh, you know magical mystical um, uh, you know Chinese uh, uh, you know um, uh, kung fu action genre. Um, and so, yeah, I am in the throes of, of putting a, uh, a series together for them called Fa Shang, which is uh, amazing. Um, and that'll hit Kickstarter, uh, um, you know, sometime late in the year or, um, uh, or early next year. Um, it'll hit Kickstarter first and then eventually comic uh, um, uh, shop. So I got that going on. Um, I actually have a, a, a movie coming out later this year. Um, uh, got a movie shot in the pandemic, uh, which is a, a minor miracle because there was nothing going on um but um a lot of uh, documentaries yeah. <laughs> well well yeah but this is actually a big kind of twisted sci-fi mindfuck uh uh you know starring emil hirsch and uh, uh you know a, a a great cast um and so um that that was shot in in italy um uh over the course of the pandemic and it will um it is set to premiere uh hopefully um you know uh pandemic craziness permitting uh, at the Venice Film Festival um, in October, and then it'll have a you know wide theatrical release after that. Um, so um, yeah, are you so, allowed to so say that, the title or no? Oh uh, yeah, it's called State of Consciousness. Okay, it's, you know it's on it's on IMDb. It's uh you know we had our variety announcement, and we were written up in Italian Rolling Stone and and all of that stuff. So so that one's uh you know that one's uh that one's going. But um but yeah, I mean I just um. A lot of stuff on the horizon. I mean, I, I found out that the the first movie I ever got paid to write in Hollywood. You know, this is 15 years ago. Um, uh, uh, Penelope Cruz uh, uh, hired me to write um, this movie uh, with um, Fernando Trueba, who's a Spanish director who um, won the Oscar for foreign language film for Bella Poke. 
Um, so I wrote this like years ago and um, it, it, you know, and then the financial crisis happened um, and the movie didn't get made and I, I thought it was just done. And I got a call, uh, you know, just recently out of the blue that it's going. Um, and so Matt Dillon signed on and so that's shooting this spring. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like, there's something in the air, like productions are kind of cropping up and um, just sold the TV series, the Lionsgate uh, with, um, with the B Diggs attached who is um, uh, the, the lead in the Snowpiercer uh, uh, series. And, um, and he, uh, um, and he uh, uh, was one of the stars of Hamilton. He won a Grammy and a Tony for, uh, for Hamilton. Um, and so um, uh, we have him and his partner, uh, uh, Rafael Casal, who's one of the original Def Jam poets. They just did um, this uh, blind spotting TV series that uh, premiered on, uh, on Stars this past weekend, which was just fucking phenomenal. And so, um, so we had this big badass action joint with them and with uh, Emmy Raver Latman, who's one of the stars of uh, uh, Umbrella Academy. So, um, so that, um, that should start shooting soon also and um so a lot of tv movie stuff going on some comic stuff going on uh it's fun i'm busy and uh and after sitting in my house for 18 months i'm excited to uh you know to go to set and um and see things happen um i i was supposed to be in italy for 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 the shoot i mean literally it was um uh, this was in February of last year. I was supposed to get on a plane to Italy and do work in Italy and help shepherd the the project. And then and then Italy got hit hardest of all. And so Northern Italy went berserk. The entire country was closed down, and so we couldn't go. And so I'm excited to actually, um, you know, with this thing in the spring, it's being shot in Greece. And so I'll, I'll you know, uh, assuming uh, uh, another pandemic doesn't hit, or assuming an asteroid doesn't hit us, or something like that. Nice callback. You see how I did that. Um, I will, uh, I will get to go to a Greek island and watch them shoot my movie. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm geeked about that and hopefully, you know, bring my family with me. So that's great. Especially like you said, kind of, I don't want to say getting back to normal because normal has been redefined, but getting yeah. back to more of a routine of what you're used to is, I guess you could say it. it you know, it's, it, it, it's nice to, it's nice to get out of the house and do anything, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I went to, I went to 7-Eleven the other day and it was a revelation. So, <laughs> yeah. so bring on Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ryland, I appreciate you so much for t taking the time to come on, talk to the viewers and the community about all the work you've done. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a movie guy also, so I loved hearing all the, the movie talk, but no doubt, pick this comic up. Issue one is definitely worth picking up. Pick up the whole pre-order, like I said, pre-order, put it in your pull list, get that whole first arc, get the second arc when it comes out. But Anything you want to say to the viewers before we go? No, I'm just, thanks for having me on. I mean, um, uh, you know, I told you this over email, but um, I'm a big fan of the show and I found your show because it is the show that the, uh, that the comic shop owners watch, you know? Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I, 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 I take my cues from comic shop owners. They're, they're, they're smart people with good taste. And, uh, and when I was looking for, for shows to watch, I, I went to some of my, you know, trusted comic shop owner allies. I'm like, what shows do you like? What shows do you watch? And, um, and, and way too many of them, uh, uh, depending on how you look at it, said yours. And so, uh, and so that got me really interested. And so that well, was how I, I knew you. I definitely appreciate that. and appreciate the kind words, especially from the retailers. I, comic community, a lot of times I, I admit it, um, I'll get comments because, hey, you know, the collectors, there's collectors, there's speculators sometimes. Um, the speculators don't like it but i'm here to, i love the comic community it's whether it's the retailers whether it's the creators whether it's collectors whether it's the readers i do some speculate myself but i just like talking comics and i love the fact that what you mentioned there is some of the biggest accolades i could ever ask for is is retailers or anyone that enjoys the content i love it and i love having creators on you're welcome on simple man's comics anytime and even maybe we'll get Maybe we can get you and Boer together on. Who knows? But either way, it's wait, 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 wait. we'll create an anthology on your show. There we go. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I'll I'll write your word, your prose and your words down. And <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. You, you can do the writer's assistant thing. That's a that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. You, you get it all down and and make some sense of it. And yeah. we'll just we'll just riff. That's, One thing great... David Boer said when he was on my channel that always rings true. And you you know your background and your your profession writing comics screenwriting he mentioned that he gets asked the question a lot of times of like hey what do you think or how do you break into the business or i'm an aspiring writer david yeah. Boer brought up a great point where he said there's no such thing as an expiring writer either you're writing or you're not writing yeah. right would you agree with that 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's the first thing I um, it's the first thing I, I I tell people that same thing. And when um, I'll get messages on Twitter, and uh, their Twitter bio will say, you know, aspiring comic creator, and I'm like, well, have you you know have you created a comic? Well, yeah, here it is. Well, you're not aspiring anymore. <laughs> you just you just did it. And um, yeah, I mean, I you know I feel like maybe maybe ten years ago there was this like there was this line you had to cross. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because it was so hard to do, but man, you can just, you can do these things in your basement now, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, in the last five years, it just got so much, I don't want to say easier because it's never easy, but it got, it, it became so much more possible to get your comic created, you know, um, um, I mean, there are, uh, uh, you know, it used to be that you had to, you had to know uh, an artist in your town and you were dealing with physical drawings. Now everything's digital workflow. Now there are massive groups on, on Facebook, like connecting comic book writers and artists that have like, 40,000 members and it's just an art gallery and and you know it's this artist and that artist and and they're they're just putting their work up being like hey I need projects who's got something um you know and 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 you know so I mean that that was how I got started you know I mean I was a you know I was a I mean I was a screenwriter for whatever that was worth but I was still sitting in a in a panel at a comic con trying to learn how to do this stuff I was still digesting stuff online and like the resources out there for everybody um you know, it, it is it, it is so possible now to kind of get everything you need. And thanks to these same tools that all of you have access to and can use. I mean, I, I have like four or five books in, in, in production now. I have um, I have artists working for me in, in Hungary, in Brazil, um, uh, in Mexico. I, uh, one of my go-to colorists is in Indonesia. Uh, my, my letterer is in the UK. We communicate almost exclusively via email. Uh, I pay via PayPal. We trade files via Dropbox. Uh, uh, revisions happen instantaneously because it's a digital workflow. Um, you can get your comic done, you know. And then and, and and money isn't even a problem now because you can take it to Kickstarter and you can recoup your budget. And um, it's it's awesome. So uh, so so create create create. There's no aspiring. Just shut up and do it. Um, and, and you will find an audience for it. So, so yeah, do it. There, there you go, guys. You heard from Rylan, heard from David Boer again, one last time, suicide jockeys, make sure you pre-order it, get it at your LCS. Rylan, again, thank you so much for coming on. This has been Brown Superman's comics. See you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.